We are, fa- we are mom and pop all in one shop. It's, we all, this is our family business. Right. And everybody out there, I know they say champagne, whatever. They've got their family businesses. And all of us had adversity in the last almost two years when they yeah. shut down. So a lot of people, hustlers like us and people out there like you guys, have their foot on the fucking hand. <laughs> we have coffee. We have good coffee. coffee. I'm spending money. No, no, no. I want, my, I, I want that coffee, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm drinking. I'm, I'm getting the last drops of that. No, but, I saw you hitting that corner. No, but you know what it was? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was Corner bad. of a round cup. I saw you get it, though. That's that corner of a round cup. Right no, you there. know what it is, though, for real? Um, it's like you, you just... Uh, there are two ways to look at it, right? Some people are good at just, like, letting go and figuring it out as it goes. I was never that guy, and I don't think I'll ever be that guy. So, we'll uh, go back to your background here. Dad's not around in an out of prison. You're w- yep. raised by a single mom. Single mom until she met my stepfather, who became right. my who, who became my my father in a formidable sense. You know, became like you know taught me how to ride a bike and throw a ball and swing a fist and you know what I mean. And like yeah, but you've got a mindset of I've got to do this. Yeah, but it was also because it was kind of like um, not that I had to like grow up fast, but I guess it was like living in the city with my mom you just had to Ready to sail. You had to figure it out a little Set bit sail. Like, grow, you know the phrase like grow up i say that sometimes in a mean way when somebody says i like grow up like get over it it's you you, have, you can't control it it's gone it's over it already happened general and that comes from kind of my mom's mentality she was kind of a tough she was tough love in a good way but she was also like you gotta get over it it's, it's done it's already happened yeah. you're gonna complain about it all day now it's done i mean dude we joked about this at thanksgiving <laughs> This is how different. This is how different the '80s were. Uh, because the bu- I lived close enough to school in the city where the bus wouldn't get me, because it's in like a mile and a half was the radius or something like that. But my mother didn't want me to walk because it was like it was the city, and it's also like you know, a little kid by himself, and she couldn't because she was working full time and couldn't afford to hire somebody. So there was this dude who was like a retired him and his wife. Attack! They drove this old Begin station wagon, the old Crown Vic Woody. And they picked up kids from our neighborhood. Oh my God! This sounds perfect. Right, 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 right. No, no, no! It doesn't get bad. It doesn't get bad. It doesn't get bad. It doesn't get bad. Doesn't get bad. Doesn't get bad. Imagine the sales pitch of this couple being like, right. "We'll drive your kids. You're gonna pick up your kids. You're gonna pick up all seven of your kids, dude." There would be like six, and we'd be in the old, in those old. It's the early Uber. Right oh, it was. There, it was, it was Uber. Chair. But people remember. People remember. If you remember those old, like the station wagon Crown Vicks. The, first of all, the bed of those things was like an F450. Oh, yeah. It was it was 55 feet, dude. It was a yacht. Car- it was a yacht carpeted yacht. And if you couldn't get if you didn't get picked up in time, or you, your your route was because he changed all the time depending on the traffic, you wouldn't get the bench seat. The, the you know the bench back seat, which was you could fit 14 little kids in that bench seat. No one's got a seatbelt on, right, yeah. and you would have to get in the backpack if you didn't get a bench seat. How many kids are getting in the backpack? <laughs> Just rolling around. I mean, just, uh, oh, just wow. and, 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 and if you were really unlucky, you had to sit on a wheel well. You know what I mean? Then you, <laughs> yeah, then you know. get burned and shit. Like, ah, that's a it, was, it was too hot because the metal was frying. Dude, you, we, we'd be bouncing around. You'd hit your head on those windows at, at least four or five times on the way home because it'd stop fast. Yeah. And you'd smack your head on the side. <laughs> and he's just some neighbor taking Just some guy. Just some guy from the neighborhood. He take you to school. I mean, I did it for two years. Two years he used to pick me up. Oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah. And you know what's so funny is, and sometimes he'd be late, you know, because this guy just lived his life. And I would be standing in the rain outside of school when it'd be closed. I remember standing in the rain for the home ride back home, for the the home back home. And I remember how mad I was. And I thought to myself, I could just walk. I better just, I could just walk home. But then I knew if I walked, my mom would have beat the shit out of me. If I walked all the way home, because back then, uh, Cabrini Green was still there. The Cabrini Cabrini Green was like the uh, the project is the project. Okay. It's not there anymore. Uh, Robert Taylor was the most famous projects, but Cabrini Green were pretty, pretty famous. And now, it's like right next to a kind of a nice area. Now it's their condos, and you know what I mean. That, but back then it was still there, so it was kind of a sketch. If I was walking around there, it's like no one's gonna really fuck with a little kid. But it's just the idea that's like how little? Eight, nine. I was seven. That's my daughter's age right now. Seven. I can't imagine letting her letting her walk, walk on a city street. A mile. Yeah, come on, man. But back then, yeah. But we did. I did get to walk around. Like there was a White Hen Pantry uh, down the block and around the corner that I used to go there and steal donuts. They had Long John donuts. That was my favorite. But I was so low to the ground, I could sneak in and walk out, and the dude would never see me. You know, behind the counter, because I just. And what was he gonna say? But White Hen was like um, 7-Eleven. It's the same kind of yeah. thing. 
but she would let me go walk to the White Hen or walk to little spots around or the grocery store. But in retrospect, it was funny because now you you would you would never let never. Not only would you never. If you did, yeah. you'd be arrested. Yeah, you go to prison. You would yeah. absolutely yeah, be, be child arrested. In yes, yeah. It would. Yes. <laughs> Let him run it around. There's no doubt about that. Sure. But that. But anyway, so so cut going back to her her tough love was always a part of my family's thing. And so because of that, I think I had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own, take the risk. This whole career was is a risk, but I can hear that, but like it's a sketchy risk. I sat in bed when I first moved out here sitting on a mattress literally on the ground in a partitioned off dining room that I talked about last time I was here sharing a one a, one bathroom with four guys you know and I was scared I couldn't make $385 rent I was so scared I was so scared that I'm not kidding I was like if I sell enough blood or sperm or body parts maybe I, maybe I can Greetings. win again I've so, looked into it I talked about it here you've I, been you've been there we've I all been there where you're like donating plasma, sperm sperm no, yeah I've looked in the plasma I was, plasma was deep I looked in the sperm and my grandma you know she's alive at the time and she was very upset she's a Catholic woman telling me that this these are still my children these yeah. are still my children <laughs> it's not some load I'm shooting into a fucking sock these are my kids it out is there though. you know it yeah. is so um but what I realized when I actually sat down, I started making phone calls. And there's no internet. I'm talking to all these nurses, these people. And what I learned was that you're only allowed to donate two Imperial. samples in a certain mile radius. Uh, because although it might be improbable, it's possible that those two could be male, female. And, and then mate. In that, and, and live in that same Whoa. How many people do you know from high school stay in the same area? I mean, almost. And then have children and unknown. You sper you sperm map in Texas, you can keep moving around. Texas, Houston one weekend, Dallas Alaska. the next weekend. I, all <laughs> I thought about it, dude, and I got scared. And I thought, well, this is a bad idea. This is going to come back to haunt me. But, but anyway, so that anxiety is what I still carry today. As the man I am today, I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. I'd like to think one day it will. I mean, money doesn't solve that problem. No. The, uh, time, I think, will start to heal it. As Take up the shield! With. Grasp the spear, sharpen the and sword's also, edge. This is a day of destiny, destiny. and fate of many will be decided in this place. I don't check my phone. Rebellious slaves may internet. think of victory, no but we should make we them think shit. kindly of their master's it. whips. We just walk around to like, this looks like a cool place to chill. We'll go hang out somewhere. We don't make grandiose plans. We literally go to the place that we want to go on vacation, and we just figure it out as we go. And if we can do it, we'll do it. If not, we won't. And then that's it. And that's what I love because I can't do that here. Units, here it's like noon to one, 130 to two, 230 to four. Meet with this guy. Call, call. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Go to bed. Wake up. Cohort. All over again. Move, move. So that the anxiety Legionary. is fueled from Run. not feeling like I um, and not do enough. Do not are enough. Are enough of a human outside of my job, which is that's where that and the depression move, comes from. Move. You know. You said you were diagnosed. What does that mean? And, and what happened? How did you get diagnosed? I think I had a pretty. You know, when I was in college, I think I spoke about this, but I had, I had, um, not here, I think. I had, uh, I had ocular migraines that I still get sometimes. I go blind with my leg. Sometimes, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes up to an hour and a half. I mean, are you shitting yourself? Well, when it first happened, I did. Kimmel, so I had like a, like a break. I mean, I was at like a psychotic break. So I went to I had a severe panic attack, passed out, and couldn't breathe. Damn. I went to the ER because I thought I was going to I thought something was wrong with my brain. And my blood work. My, my girlfriend at the time got blessed, she did take me everywhere. You know, she was doing We're being the target. Fight begins! Now the real fight begins! 
And then that was Legion uh, I Not you know I, this is not funny to joke about. Not suicide. Yeah. No, it's not funny to joke about like because I know that's a real thing to do, like I, I never that never came to my mind even a little bit. Like I thought that was crazy. We're under attack! When I was out, I was at my lowest. I would think about well, this is really attacking us. ending it all, but not my life. Ending whatever I'm doing. being like I'm gonna disappear. Unit. I'm almost like suicide, social suicide. Unit. It's like I'll Double leave everything ever again, and I'll start something else somewhere else. I mean, I know you put thought into yeah, it. Yeah, back then but I used not to, enough, I'll bet. No, but mm -hmm. back then I used to just and and sometimes it enters my brain today of like, wouldn't it be wild to just? This is disgusting. It's almost sociopathic to be like wouldn't it be wild to just leave and not tell anybody friends and family and just go get a labor job in the middle of nowhere shave my head you know what i mean and go go live in the middle of nowhere nothing and just work a, ha a job with my hands go to work and go back to my little yeah, trailer yeah santino's roofing <laughs> I, no, i'm telling you out in omaha yeah he is man in the middle <laughs> of nowhere <laughs> yeah i just want to live in the middle of nowhere and don't talk to anybody and just that would, that be, would be that was my getaway ass. my getaway was like what if i just left and it's not like I'm leaving for another family or another thing. I just wanted to, I wanted to just shed all the pressure and the, that's how I, I think some people do feel that way. That they're like, what if I could just get rid of all this shit and just disappear and not die, but just try to start over again or something. Cause the pressure gets insane. So that's what I would feel when I was at my lowest was like, how do I, how do I get, how do I escape? escape? Yeah. How do I escape? I don't want to end my life. But I just want to get out of this one. I want to get out of this one. Yeah, it's wild. Which is funny that you, it's funny because like uh, I always used to say, I'm too selfish to kill myself. You know how they say people that kill themselves are super selfish. I said I'm so selfish I won't kill myself because I want to know what happens. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, such a selfish, yeah, self-indulgent yeah. brat that I'm like I want to know where this thing ends up. I don't want to take care of myself. I don't want to do that now. But now I don't want to do it now. <laughs> there's a there is uh, a you never know. <laughs> but you know what we talked about? I talked about in the barber the other day. I said I was we were listening to. I know I'm. I'm jumping all over the place, but that's how my brain is. But Future Islands is a great band. Do you know who that is? Mm -mm. It's a great band, dude. Okay. You want to see a great performance. Future Islands did a performance on David Letterman right at the end of Letterman's run. And my God, you could always tell when Dave liked a band when he went over there and he was like, oh, wow. Like he would get I mean, it. Hell, he had the Foo Fighters like what, every night he to loved, close loved, it out? Loved. Yeah, loved. But you could just feel when he liked somebody. When he didn't like or when he didn't care for it or was whatever, he was like, hey, give it to this guy. How, how about that? That's great. Watch this performance of Future Islands. Uh, on Letterman, it will blow your mind. He's so animated, and the the singer so he's beating his chest, and Letterman was blown away, and it kind of catapulted their these guys. Anyway, I'm at the barber, and he's got it on in the background. I was like, man, the passion in this guy's songs, and they're so, um, they're like so heartfelt and gut wrenching a little bit. Like you can feel the sadness in them. Yeah, I love that shit. Oh, it was so real. But then I said, we were just sitting there, it was really quiet. It was just me and him in the whole barber shop. And I said, I wonder if him playing those songs every weekend makes him sad. Because in the same way that comics, people don't understand, it's like making people laugh sometimes can kind of get you in a down place because you're exuding all this energy to make other people feel, 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 feel. And sometimes you're not feeling much because you're so focused on making other people feel. And especially with music, if you're not connected to music, you're probably playing bad music. But if you're connected, it's probably good fucking music. Oh yeah. No matter no matter what Make category. Make you cry it is. in a grocery store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the bag of peas. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is oh, it. God, but man. but I think I was like I wonder if that really hurt, sometimes gets him down. And that because we talked about how Chris Cornell committed suicide. I was in that hotel. A while was that? I was in Detroit interviewing Golden Tate. Wait, at the same time? Yep. Yeah, I, no. I was there that the same weekend. Night? I was there. I was there. We were there. We were there. Holy fuck. We were there because I was interviewing Golden Tate for a show I did called um, Here's the Rub. It was like this character-driven show where I played this Russian. It's a whole thing. It was for Yahoo Sports. It was fun. How about that? It goes yeah, back to get him, Russia. I get him, Russia. Back, That's exactly that right. Goes it goes all back. the way to the feast. So, but we were there, and I said about when Cornell killed himself at that at that hotel. 
<clears throat> I was like, did that dude play such a long career of passionate, heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching music that it finally caught up to him? Like, and I can't. That's interesting. I mean, I, I, I don't know if that's the case. Well, think about it. I, I do this five-minute journal every morning, mm -hmm. and it's just an exercise of positivity and you're writing positive things i'm grateful for this i'm i am this i'm in the nighttime these th great things happen what could i have done better and it trains your brain to think glass for me half full yeah not half empty right so if you're always writing something positive and it can shift your brain that way it would make sense to me that if every day you wrote that you hated your life you hated yourself you hated your career that 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 would find it's gonna you gonna go and, yeah at some point i mean that makes sense to me and it's not what he i don't did. know if i'm well, not, and a not all of his songs were that but i mean a lot of his stuff was heart heart wrenching it was gut, it was very mm. for like his guts were out do you know what i mean it just it was so real his version of nothing compares to oh you oh my oh, god man. that's unreal it's unreal he i just he, so anyway so we were talking about that and i thought you can let it get to you it really does get to you because when i had you know my little like break it, you really understood your body was just done dealing with your anxiety and your stress so i'm learning how to manage it better exercising definitely helps me yes. personally getting up in the morning and just going to do it it's great something about it has changed the way i and also as you get older i i, I can't eat the cheeseburger right before bed anymore those days are gone because you feel way worse in the morning and I, I see it I feel it but going to the gym will make me mentally and physically feel better so I've been doing that's been my balance to battle anxiety and stress and then also taking time to just go away I take drives at night which is that's nice yeah I, go, I do it all the time it's kind of weird she, at first she was you know she was adverse to it she's like where are you going where are you running away and I was like I just like to sit in the car with no music on and just think and I just take long drives because uh, I used to do it when I was a teenager. I used to go for a drive all the time. Nobody does it now. Uh, but I just, because gas is 85 bucks a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fucking breaking the bank. But, you know, join the Patreon so I can keep taking them rides. <laughs> <laughs> it's for my mouth. It's for my mouth, yeah. But I do, I'll take long drives. I'll, I'll go way up, uh, up Santa Clarita. I'll go way out there, drive around. I don't know. It just gives me a way to, like, escape at night because sometimes sitting in the house is like... Driving's always been a freedom. I love it, dude. I, do too. I, I love it so much. I, I hate being a passenger. Yeah, no, I hate it. I hate it. I don't want to be in your car. I want to be in my car and I want to drive. And I want it. to be driving. Yeah, wherever yeah. I want to go. Yeah. So that kind of helps me. But I found little tricks to help me out. But that's not to say, dude, I don't get I get there's bad days. There's bad weeks. You know, luckily I don't have bad months. I don't go through like big chunks like that, but I go through consecutive days, consecutive weeks, and then I'll slowly start to turn out of it. And what, usually. what's usually a shift that helps you? Hmm. You know, talking to family helps a lot. Talking to my mom, perspective. And then also, um, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, but work. Like a lot of times getting up on stage when I'm in a bad way does help me kind of get to a better balance. Like see, there's a community that loves you and appreciates you, fans and, and our friends. And then there's like it's like it, it like rejiggers rejiggers your your insides like hey man don't you know people value you you value them you value this world you put work into this thing it's a there is a a mutual you know there, there's a reciprocation in this thing that you've built so go be in it so sometimes being in it helps me get away from being deep and in my head and stressed out and sad and you know although i like to escape from work but sometimes work is the thing that goes hey work being stand-up specifically yeah but like it just gets me back to like you know knowing there's a community that cares that you've built that you love that you care about and cares about you and that's a nice comfort to have it's the same way that you know people who actually enjoy their jobs they do probably because the community is kind of nice it's nice to go talk to people at work it's nice to work with clients that you get along with that you get to joke with it it feels the same way to us as a guy who's in sales or a girl who's in you know marketing or whatever the people that whatever you're doing i i think like when you have the community it helps you kind of feel okay again a little bit yeah because you know that we're all going through shit so it's like no one's exempt that's why i did this show yeah you go look at everyone's social media it's everybody's highlights yeah 
and this is the fucking total opposite of that right. page. Right. This you this know? is this is the not the low lights, yeah. brother. Not the Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> if you dread looking at your credit card statements, you are not alone. The weight of debt can be crippling, but Upstart can help you on your path to financial freedom. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan, and it's all online. So whether you're paying off high credit cards, whether you're consolidating high interest debt, or you're funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. So rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart considers other factors like your income, your current employment, and your credit history to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 all the way up to $50,000. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash honeydew. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. Don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash honeydew. Athletic Greens, the health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really simple. Look, it's my favorite new thing every day, and I've been using it for a while now. I look, I don't get to eat right all the time. I don't. And I, also, sometimes I choose not to. So I know I need to get my nutrients. I know I need to get my vitamins every single day. I'm using Athletic Greens. I take a little pouch, drop it in my water, boom, off I go. With so many stressors in life, it's difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and give our bodies the nutrients it needs to thrive. AG1 by Athletic Greens, the category leading superfood product, brings comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition to everybody. And to help each of us be at our best, they simplify the path to better nutrition by giving you the one thing with all the best things. One tasty scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and more in one convenient daily serving. The special blend of high quality bioavailable ingredients in a scoop of AG1 work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, support your energy and focus, aid with gut health and digestion.